All right. We are now recording. Welcome to the Project Operations Sync as of August 5th. Um, wonderful to have you all here. And Dietrich, do you want to start us off with community and maintenance items? Yeah, everybody. So we shipped a blog post last week telling the community and all of our users the changes that we've made to make sure that IPFS is going to be stable, at least often, fast, and all the other good things, well documented. Um, so links out to all the work that you are doing are there. Everybody here should not be surprised with this because you probably reviewed the post to begin with. Um, but if you have any updated links or want to change things, you know where to do that. Uh, the community bit has a has a uh, link to a kind of matrix that we started building to understand what's covered when it's tested and how. The short answer to the to the action item from last week was yes. Uh, Henrik Henrik is testing manually uh, things like Web UI against the latest releases, uh, and was co pretty confident that there weren't any issues or didn't see any issues but that kind of opened up the question of how do, how do we communicate that proactively and how do we understand the sum total of things that need to be tested, when they're tested, how they're tested, um, what are we not testing that we should be testing. So that's where this kind of came out of. There's still a lot of uh, question marks there where we don't really have a full understanding. And I think part of that is just connecting with um, uh, Ollie and Enrique to finish filling this bit out. But if you have any thoughts about other things that should be here or something that is covered or have a, have a link to uh, where the tests are and how often they're run, if they're in CI, any of the relevant information, that would be really helpful. Thanks. Super cool. We should stick this on the GitHubs because it would be awesome to have testing matrixes there as well. I know that I've seen some of these in the past for other repos. Yeah, I think, I think once we get to a point of where we understand that this is the right list of things, uh, and then we have issues to, uh, links to point to what exists, and then issues for things that we know, gaps we know we want to fill, then we'll definitely move it to um, one of the places. Alan, you're probably the, or I guess this involves all, all of the implementations, so maybe I'll just bring it up at the core implementations meeting and ask what people think where a good home would be. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, do we want to flow into collaborations and we'll just work our way back up? Maybe yeah. Arkady, Dietrich, one of you? Sure. Arkady, you want to give this update? Sorry, sorry, I was distracted looking at, a, at the blog post. Uh, where were we? Uh, uh, collaboration updates. If you added the ENS item there. Yeah, so, uh, so the ENS, <clears throat> ENS update is that the main uh, point of contact that I had over there has moved on to different projects, uh, which required some resynchronization, but I think we should be good. Uh, also, I saw that uh, Steve merged their PR, uh, I guess, yesterday, so that should unblock them from our side. And the uh, Jessica, Jessica's question, uh, there is a collaborations repository. And right now, the way of, uh, I guess, starting or asking about a collab possibility is to file an issue in that repo. And it's got a little template that fills out, has you uh, answer a couple of different questions. And people like Arkady and Molly and myself end up taking a look at those sooner or later and commenting or reaching out to you. Uh, but part of the project that our and I are working on right now is making that a little bit more systematic and uh, part of that hopefully will be making it easier and clearer for new people coming to the project who want to start up a collaboration or want to put that forward as a possibility and have a discussion about it. I'll link the Collabs repo there. Dietrich, you want to give the Opera update? Yeah, we had we had a meeting there. Um, you know, our main, main contact there was out for most of the summer, and uh, people are starting to come back because it's Norway. Uh, almost the entire building, it sounded like, was out for the summer. So as engineering teams are coming back, these conversations are picking up again, which is great. 
Awesome, awesome. All right, and core implementations, Stephen or Alan. Uh, well, I can speak with the Go stuff. Um, we have a Go IPFS release imminent, uh, where it's the end of stage three. We still need a few sign offs, uh, which we'll hopefully get today, or what we will get today. Um, and uh, as of this morning, there's a uh, draft blog post uh, for the release process. Uh, process. Uh, and Jim has gotten the uh, IPFS benchmark system working against Scopefest Master. He's working on getting this deployed and upstream. So those are my updates. And I guess Alan can give his update. Yeah, of course. Um, so on the JS IPFS side of things, um, the 037 release is imminent. There is a release candidate which has been out for probably two weeks now, I guess. Um, so that's kind of cool. Um, no major blockers, or, or no one's reported any major blockers on that yet, which is great. Um, there is a couple of to-dos that I still need to get done before we can release. There's the js.ipfs.io website needs to be updated. The examples on there are incorrect now that we have a, um, a new constructor um, in this release. Um, so I'm just changing that up, but it's being annoying. Uh, <laughs> Just taking time. Um, and I need to write a blog post for the release as usual. Um, and so, yeah, just a note that this was 126 different people that made 2,091 separate contributions in one way or another um, for this release. So that's kind of cool. Um, the full re list is in the issue, um, the release issue. Um, and so, next up, once 037 is released, I plan to um, pull in the uh, new goodness from the Go IPFS. Uh, release process and update our release flow to be in line in uh, one way or another uh, that makes sense for JS IPFS. Um, so that's my update. Cool. So from a sequencing thing, it sounds like we should aim for getting the JS release out. Oh, hold on a second. You can find me a Steven. Sorry. There we go. Um, so we should aim to get the JS release out and then time the Go release with the release process update, um, since it'll be a little bit confusing if we talk about having a release process update and then we do a release that's not related to the release process update. So, that's a really good um, point. Timing perspective, let's make sure that we, we get the JS one out before the Go one and that we time the Go one with the other release. Go well, ahead. No, uh, we did follow the release process with the release, so it is related. the JS IPFS release process? Oh, uh, no, sorry, the, never mind. Yeah, yes. our, so the, the issue is that the JS IPFS release process is similar, but it's no, no longer, um, would the Go IPFS release process is completely, completely changed now, so we want to make, make them uh, a bit more similar. So yeah, uh, getting uh, the JS IPFS release out uh, and followed by the uh, information that the, Go IPFS release process has changed uh, will probably make more sense to people. Yep, and uh, I think the thing on the, I have not looked much through the blog post. Thank you, Stephen, for all of the hard work on that. Um, but I think we, we were also hoping to have some illustrations to pull in there to make this kind of easier to, to visually parse and understand. And so um, from a timing of, of making that post, we also might want to push it back a few extra days if we can Cause, cause it to line up well with those illustrations and make it accessible and, and wondrous from a, a visual perspective. Any other things? What's coming next for folks after we you feel like we're, we've done a, a awesome sprint on kind of the, the first set of things. What are folks foreseeing or worried about for the rest of the quarter? going forward. I, I started filing issues and mapping a bunch of these OKRs to the, to the actual issues. And one of the things that's sitting in the back of my head is finishing that work so that we have an understanding of that what comes next, according to the list we all agreed on before the quarter started. I'll, hopefully, I will get further on that this week. I was also taking a look at our OKRs. We don't have an update from, I guess I can't drag into a window that I'm currently sharing. 
less, but I can probably do this. Um, we don't have an update from research this week because David is out through the end of August, but I, they're, the, the research call from last week was super, super awesome. And folks attended on Wednesday talking about um, various things. I literally was having dreams last night about um, sharded DHT constructions. It was like very vivid and rather trippy. Uh, do not recommend having very deep dreams about how to structure a DHT. It's complicated, uh, but, but also fun. So recommend watching that on YouTube if you weren't able to attend it in person. Do you, do you, if you have a link to that, can you add it to the notes? I'd like to rewatch or watch for the first time. Delay. Can do. I'll, I'll look for that. Um, I don't have it on me at the moment. Um, it's probably, I believe, somewhere soon on the uh, IPFS YouTube channel, but I don't have the details. Um, all right, other things from our OKRs. Um, are there any updates around IPNS or um, benchmarking? Uh, well, there's the update from about benchmarking, not IPNS though. What is the update around benchmarking? Uh, the fact that Jim has the benchmarks uh, almost working against GoFS. But this is not network benchmarking. This is just like uh, interrupt benchmark, or not interrupt, like integration benchmarking. So like quick, like send a file from one computer to the other computer. Right, sorry, I forgot about that. Which is awesome. Yeah, that's super good news. It's, uh, it means that, you know, that we can start, they can, a system that already exists can start being useful to go IPFS as well as JIPFS, JS IPFS. Um, yeah. And, and it's really, it's really close. Jim has spent relatively little time on this really. Um, and, uh, yeah, it, it's kind of ready to go. The idea is to get the pull request merged, uh, this week. Well, uh, tomorrow ideally um, or at least reviewed um, and then there is a community call tomorrow in the afternoon for me um, for uh, testing uh, IPFS and LibPTP testing where um, I believe Jim is uh, going to be um, demoing the work that he's been he's done um, and showing the progress so that should make the whole thing a lot clearer um, but yeah the main the main kind of headline is that it the, the existing system is now building Go IPFS from master and running tests against it, um, which is super good news because previously it was just running, uh, building JS IPFS and running the test against that. So. so is there a place where I can go and see, okay, I guess maybe we should just look these things up on GitHub. Um, that'll do. There's a, um, yeah, there's open pull request if you're interested in that. Um, I will put it in the doc. I was more like, I kind of want there to be a web UI for these benchmarks. And so I was curious whether that exists somewhere that I just haven't found. Okay. Yeah, um, not so much, but the Grafana um, uh, kind of tool, um, Jim has been playing around with that quite a bit and has um, done some different visualizations um, of, of the data, uh, which uh, make a lot more sense than the things that I showed on the previous meeting. Um, he's just basically pulled it out and made it look a bit better, um, separated out the tests in some cases. Um, it, essentially, Grafana is infinitely configurable. Um, it's just having the knowledge and ability to do it, but he's done what I can see is quite a good job of making what was there a lot easier to uh, digest. My problem was I was typing in benchmarks.ipfs.io and expecting that to take me to benchmarks.ipfs.team. And uh, a, a team TLD was not familiar to me. Um, and so I assume IPFS performance new, maybe, are the new graphs. Multi-peer transfer, local ad, other cool stuff. Oh, Data so I think what we're talking what about. Done, he's been doing it on his local instance, and we're hoping oh. to get that merged and released um, as soon as we can. Uh, so it will be demoed tomorrow, and then we can feed back on it, uh, whether or not it's been um, pushed to the to production or not. Um, if it's not on production, then it will be, Jim will demo it from his laptop. So um, you, you should be able to see the progress there, um, but not before. <laughs> Super snazzy. Coming. Thank you. 
All right. Any other updates, things for the future? We already got a 1.0 on this one. And I saw a bajillion open issues from um, around um, IPFS camp content and having people um, kind of share share the cool stuff that they've been doing in a forum that is more more accessible to people who weren't able to make it to camp in person, which is cool. And yeah, I feel like we're making really good progress on a lot of these. So probably we're we're not quite at mid quarter grading as of yet, um, but that's coming, I believe, in like two two weeks from now. And I feel like we're making very decent progress. But useful also to peek at any of these that you have your name next to and see how you feel about, about where we're at. Other topics, questions? People want to take 10 minutes back? All right, the fastest of meetings. I will see all of you guys in hopefully 10 minutes for the weekly call. Uh, Ollie's gonna be giving us a cool run through of Shipyard and there's so many things in Shipyard that this is gonna be like, he's gonna be the navigator guiding us through all of the very shipping lanes. I've also been playing a lot of, yeah, it's gonna be great. Ollie the captain, it's very appropriate. I feel like he might even have a captain hat somewhere. I believe it. Perfect, I'll see all of you guys shortly. Bye.